Okay, so now we're going to do the fins. We need the scissors. Uh, you might want one of the alternative cutting tools uh, that we had earlier. You probably won't want all of them. Uh, you'll need masking tape, uh, a writing utensil. Uh, we'll need the fin material, which I'm using the 1 16th inch uh, cardboard here. Uh, you can also use the uh, balsa wood as well. Either should work fine for this. And you will need the guide. Uh, so we're going to uh, cut out one of the fin guides. Um, don't cut precisely to the fin guide until you have fit it to your material. Uh, because we're going to tape these fins onto this and then use that as a stencil either as a pin to uh, make an indention to mark to cut on or we're just going to cut the uh, stencil itself. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, trim these kind of like this um, in such a way. And then I'm going to um, pull off some masking tape. Uh, some long pieces, and uh, going to uh, try and tape this uh, securely down, like so. Um, can grab this, uh, cut along that, so it's not too much in my way. Should have seen that coming. That would have been easier to begin with. And then from here. I'm going to cut uh, long ways and just cut three uh, pieces out. Um, this is substantially easier if you uh, use the box cutter or uh, the X-Acto knife, but I'm just doing this with scissors. So you can see how to do it with scissors if you don't happen to have uh, a utility knife or a box cutter laying around. Um, Once again, if they're not really precise, you don't need to fret over it uh, that much. Um, there's pretty uh, good amount of tolerance uh, built into everything. So I've cut each one of these diagonals further past. Uh, you'll note the masking tape is holding it on at both sides. Then we're going to come up uh, along here and cut our fins uh, out. I'm um, actually, uh, okay, that's fine and finish the cut on this side. Um, you'll notice I cut it way too close to the masking tape. There's not much masking tape holding the guide on, so I kind of need to hurry and be careful to be sure that I cut uh, along the guide how it needs to be cut along. And then I will come along this side and uh, cut off the final remnants of the guide. And then uh, clear away my trash. And then I have my three uh, cardboard fins. Uh, process would be very similar for using balsa wood uh, since it can cut easily with a utility knife or um, whatever method you prefer. And this is probably dry enough by now. It only needs to sit for a minute or two. I'm going to gently uh, peel this off, trying not to take uh, too much of the nose cone with it. I'll set that aside and also double check to be sure that uh, it does fit inside it. Now we're going to make what's called a launch lug. It's a little tube. Um, if you happen to have a straw that's of a similar size to your uh, launching pole that comes with your kit, I uh, just suggest using one of those because this is kind of uh, frustrating at times because if you make this too tight you'll have to redo it because it needs to be able to freely slide along the pole and we're going to be using this pole for rolling it. So we're going to uh, have the glue stick um, ready, uh, maybe the masking tape as well if we need it. And down at the bottom of our guide sheet we ha should have a good about a one inch wide strip here. Um, so I'm going to cut a uh, section of that off. I'm cutting it close to the uh, fin location markers, which is not a big deal. The fin location markers will actually need to be cut around on the black lines. 
Okay. And then, um, like I've done with anything else I've rolled, I'm going to uh, pre-roll it a little. Um, you don't want to make it too terribly tight, because like I said, uh, it needs to be tight enough to go together as a roll, but not too tight uh, to where it can't slide freely. So I've uh, creased it a little bit and you're going to back off and then grab our glue stick. Um, you actually only need to do like three or four rolls uh, rotations because it's so uh, small to begin with that uh, doesn't really take a lot of paper to make it thick enough to uh, do its job. So um, now that I have some glue on there, I'm just going to kind of gently wrap it up to the point uh, that I finish gluing it. Um, actually, I'll probably back off a little bit from the point where I finish gluing it and uh, just tear it like that. And then now I have a launch lug that slides freely uh, along the tube. Okay, now that we have the launch lug done, and our nose come down, the fins, the body, we have to do the most annoying part, um, which is making the anchor for the cone. For this, I'm going to use a uh, note card. You can also use uh, regular white paper for this. Just keep in mind, uh, you'll probably need to make uh, the sheet bigger than this because this is thin, this is thick, and to get an equivalent strength, uh, you're going to need many more layers of regular paper. So I'm just going to approximately cut this note card in half. Um, if you're using a 4x6 note card, it's no big deal. Just cut it in half in a similar manner, and uh, we'll trim it down to fit in the end because this is going to be broken down into two different parts. So I'm going to uh, take my ballpoint pen and use it to crease um, the roll of paper, or the sheet of paper, like so. Um, because what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be uh, using the inside of the tube to size the sheet of paper, which can be very frustrating at times. Um, to help out with alleviating that frustration, we're going to take a piece of masking tape and make what I'll refer to as the sticky tool. I'm going to take a ballpoint pen, this is why we have two ballpoint pens, and we're going to um, sticky side up, wrap it around so that a small section of the tape sticks each other, and then take it backwards and roll it up. So this way you have a sticky part of it on all sides. We'll use this uh, probably in a little bit. So here I'm going to take this. Uh, grab my glue stick. Sometimes uh, pinning your glue stick you might actually need to s smear white glue with your fingers uh, in order to make it work. We're going to um, glue on the inside uh, with a decent amount of white glue, or excuse me, glue stick. Um, usually you might end up having to use white glue to do this uh, because the glue stick dries too fast for you to actually be able to come back and um, unroll it enough to fit the diameter of this. So we're going to roll it back up kind of quickly, this is very time dependent, and put it back down in. I'm going to take our sticky tool and spin it uh, counter of the direction um, that we rolled it in. And you might need to pull it out a little bit so you can hold it with your fingers and then I'm just going to try and uh, make it spin uh, against the direction that we originally rolled it in. Um, you might be successful on your first try. Uh, it might take you several tries. It's no big deal. Um, as you learn how to do it, it becomes progressively easier. In this case, uh, I was able to successfully do it. If it's not completely perfectly lined up, don't worry about it because we're going to trim both sides of it. So I will leave this here, uh, push it down in to dry, and uh, move on to the next thing.